Today, we're going to be taking a very quick look at the alpha version of Generate Blocks 1.7. This brings with it some incredibly big changes that have an impact upon how you'll design using Generate Blocks and Generate Press moving forward in the future. Primarily, this is all about the Flexbox, but there's also a few other really useful tools included in this early build of the update. So let's take a look at how this impacts the way that we design things and take a look at some of those new features that have been added in. Now there's a full blog post on exactly what's going on, what's changed, and I'll link to that in the description below. But as you can see, there's an awful lot of information inside you about all the different things that have been added, the changes, the impact that that has on both generate blocks and the way that you'll design moving forward. So I'd recommend checking that out because there's some interesting information inside there. But what we're going to do is that we're going to jump over into a test page. And as you can see, I've just created a blank setup. Now this is using the standard generate press, but generate blocks and generate Blocks Pro 1.7 Alpha. So there probably will be bugs and quirks and weird things going on on screen as I'm demonstrating, but pay no attention. They'll probably be ironed out as soon as the final release is released. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what we have. If we go up to the block inspector, you'll see now we have nine blocks as opposed to the original seven. This gives us a couple more features. We've still got the typical things like grids and query loops and so on, and we've got the container. And this is where the first big change comes into the way that you'll work with generate blocks. Let's go ahead and add a container into our design. You can see this now drops a standard looking container. If we open up our list view, we have a container. However, this isn't your standard container that we're used to with generate blocks. This now is an outer container. Now by default, they used to have an outer container and an inner container automatically added into every single container you added to your design. That's no longer the case. So if you don't need that inner container, you want whatever you're putting in there to be full width, you can now do that by using a typical standard container. However, you'll see we have this new icon, which is insert inner container. If we click to add that in, that now basically gives you what you would have had previously. We have the outer container that we can set to full width and the inner container that we can set to whatever value we want or let it in inherit the standard default value we set up as part of generate press. Let me show you what I'm talking about because that kind of feels a little bit, hey, what the hell's going on? So if we take a look now, we've got our two containers. So let's start by setting our outer container to be full width. And we still have our inner container. Now our inner container is inheriting the value that we have set up inside our theme settings, but we can't override that. It's now in a slightly different place. If we come over to the right hand side, you'll see we now have a new entry called sizing. And inside there, we have a lot of controls to how we want to control various different elements inside our design. In this example, containers. So with the inner container selected, you can see we have a max width value. And we've also got this little sort of globe icon. Now this globe icon is using the global max width setting that's set up inside Generate Press. But if you're not using Generate Press or you want to override it, you can simply come in and set whatever value you want. You can change this, we can unlink it, and now that becomes totally independent. And we can say, let's set that to be 1000, for example. And now our inner container is only 1000 pixels wide. Let's make life a little bit easier. Let's change the color of the background of this so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's set that to blue. So you can see now, if we come back to our max width, and let's say set this to something like 800, you'll see that now updates accordingly. But our container, our outer container, is still full width. So they operate the same way. They're now just totally independent of each other. But that's the very, very first change. There's also a lot more going on under the hood. Let's go over into the layout option. And inside there, we've got display. Let's open that. And let's choose Flex. Now we've had most of these options before, but this is now totally expanded. If we choose Flex as our option, now we get the full Flexbox control. You can see we can set things to rows, columns, or reverse. We can align and justify our items. We can control the wrap, and we can set the column and the row gap position and so on. So all the things that you're used to when working with Flexbox are now included inside Generate Blocks. Let's go ahead and add another container so I can show you and demonstrate a little bit better. Let's add another container. We'll just simply duplicate this one and we'll set it to a different background color. So now if we select our container, we can see there's our inner containers and you can see this set up to be as a row. We can change that from row to column, but let's go and add a little bit of space inside these so they're just a little bit bigger. Come into our spacing and we'll just do something like 50 pixels of padding all the way around and do the same on our second one. And while we're in the spacing section, you'll also notice that auto for the left and right is now a thing. We can use the auto value inside our margins, which we couldn't before. 
Okay, so now we've got the containers set up. Let's go ahead and choose our parent container. And now we can set this to be row. We can set it to be columns. They stack on top of each other. We can reverse those if we want to. And we can reverse the row as well. So you can see all the standard things you used to. So if you used to use something like bricks or Elementor with the container element, this is all going to be very, very familiar to you. So that's all pretty cool. But there's also a lot more going on that I think it's probably a little bit more exciting than this. This is great from a design point of view, especially where you want more flexibility on how you can control things. And we'll come back and take a look at some of the other areas that Flex can be used. But let's go ahead and delete all of this a second. Let's go ahead and just go in and add in a container. And we'll add it in a container inside there as well. So there's our standard setup. We'll set our outer container to be full width. There we go. So now we have our basic setup. Let's go ahead, click the plus, and now let's open up and browse all. And you can see we have tabs and accordions. So we can add any of these into our design. For example, let's go ahead, choose the tabs option. This now gives us three different starting points. Let's choose the option for our horizontal tabs. And you can see we get a pretty standard looking tab setup. However, if we open up our list view and open our container, expand the tabs out and you can see everything is made up of generate blocks blocks. So you can see we've got buttons for the titles for the tabs themselves. And we've got tab items, which are basically containers. And inside there, we can put whatever we want. So for example, we may want to go ahead into tab item one, we'll click the plus, we'll choose the option for an image, and we'll add an image from our media library. And we now have an image inside there, you can see if we come up to the tab buttons, we can click on there, and we can change that to whatever we want. Same for the second tab button, and we can change that to whatever we want. And as you can see, we can edit these, we can select them, and we can see exactly what's going on on screen so we can customize any of the content inside you. But the cool thing about this is we still have full control over things like the buttons. So you can change the buttons, you can change the background colors, you can do whatever you want. So let's go and set this to be this black, for example. Customize these any way you want to. All those options are available, your sizing, your typography, backgrounds, everything is available to you. The other cool thing about this is that we can use the Flexbox model with various different parts of our design. So for example, choosing the tab buttons, which is a container that contains the two buttons. We come over to the layout section, you can see this is set to be inline flex, but we can use the rows and column, we can reverse these if we want to. You can see we can set them to columns, rows, reversed, adjust the alignment position of these, anything you want, all these options are available to you. We can come down to things like the column gap, the row gaps and so on. We can change things inside here. So we can set this to be 20 pixels, for example. We now have a space between our different tabs. Same thing goes for the tab items. You can come in here and you can customize this. You can see we can choose the layout. We can set the padding, margins, border radius, colors. Everything we want is controlled inside you as a standard block element. It's incredibly powerful and it really, really is a simple and cool way of working. So kudos to Tom and everybody else over at Generate Press and Generate Blocks for making it this simple and flexible. Now let's get rid of these tabs a second. Let's go ahead and just add a button in. Search a button, and we'll choose this option. We'll add our button. Now, you'll notice if you are a Generate Blocks user that we now have just a button. We don't have that button container wrapped around it. This removes a lot of code that really isn't needed anymore. But if you want to go ahead and add another button in, you can do that really, really easily. All you need to do is click to add a container around it. There's your container. You just go ahead and you can add another button in, and another button, and another button. So it still works in the same way if you want to use it like that. But if you don't need it, you simply want to put a single button in, we now no longer have that container wrapped around it, adding extra code in. And I think this is the kind of thing to take on board with what's happening with this update, is that there's a lot of streamlining of extraneous code that is no longer needed, and we get that flexibility of not having to have totally unique features in the sort of accordion and the tabs and so on. It's using the standard built in functions inside generate blocks itself, which means that we are using tools that we used to removing code that we don't need and having all that flexibility. For me, this is a really, really big update and something that I think is going to change the way a lot of us that use generate blocks and generate press are going to work in a good way. Now, you may be thinking, well, what about if I have legacy options, if I have a design that is using the standard way of working with those inner containers and we're using grids and so on? What's going to happen to all that? Well, the good thing is it'll still stay as it is. The nice thing about this update is it's going to respect the way things are working now. 
However, if you want to change that, you can do. So let me quickly show you. Let's go ahead and remove everything we have here. Let's go ahead now and just go click the plus. Let's go ahead and click Browse All, and we're going to choose the Pattern Library. Let's go ahead and just choose any of the patterns. It doesn't really matter too much what we're going to choose. Let's grab this one as an example. Now you see this, if we open this up, is using the standard container and the headline of the containers and everything nested inside. So everything looks the same. And if we take a look at the layout on the right hand side, this is also pretty much exactly the same as that legacy or the way that we currently work. However, you'll notice we have this toggle that says use legacy layout system. We can leave that enabled and that's exactly what's happening by default. However, if we check that, this gives us a little pop up that says, do you want to enable the new system and do you want to enable the new system only? So for example, let's choose this enable new system for inner container block. We'll select it. And you'll notice now that what happens is everything looks pretty much the same. We have this container inside a container now. So we get all the same as we had before, but it's now using the new way of working. So no longer with the container with its default inner container that we had no control over. It now gives us those two containers, the outer wrapper container and the inner container. So this has now automatically updated everything to use that new function. So you can see now if we choose the outer container and we come over, we can change this over if we want to, to flex. And there's all our flex options. The same thing goes for our container or inner container. We can change that over to flex and have full control over all those flex op options inside there. So you can see very easy. We can use those reverse options. All those things are there. And this is the nice thing about this update. It's been using this sort of Flexbox model throughout various different parts. We've seen you can use it on buttons. You can use it on containers and so on, but you can also use it on text like this headline, for example. We'll choose the headline and we've got an icon above it, but we can, if we want to, come into our layout, change this over into Flex if it's not already in Flex, and you can use this now to control what you want. So you can set it to a row, column, reverse it, all those options are available, including the alignment, the wrap, the column gaps, the positions, all those things are there. So you can, if you want to, use these new flex options to control almost every aspect. And if you have legacy designs, you can, if you want to, convert those over to the new updated version or leave them as they are and they'll carry on working. This is pretty awesome and great to see this added into this particular update. And that's basically what I wanted to show you. I would still recommend checking out the article, the blog item, because this is going to give you a little bit more background information, a bit more detail than I've done in some of the settings that maybe I haven't shown you or necessarily explained in the best way. Check it out. Links in the description. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.